sweet friends to the channel Frugal Money Saver. My name is Emmy, my husband is Paul, and we are so happy you are joining us today. We are an early retirement debt and mortgage free couple living in the state of New York. And this channel and our videos just show you how to have a full abundant life while spending less money. And today's video, we are going to share some unique tips from ourselves and from our viewers that you may not be doing or you may not know about. Now, some of you may be way ahead on the frugal journey and be like, I've been doing everything you mentioned for years, but I'm hoping there's at least one or two items in here that may be new to you. You're going to notice as we go into the actual tips and hints and tricks we share, I'm in a totally different outfit. What had happened is I filmed the video and I went right into the bulk of the video with no introduction. So it's kind of like it just starts out of nowhere. <laughs> so I figured I'd better just at least film a quick intro. We all know the tried and true tricks of saving money. Don't eat in restaurants, cut the cable if you can. We know to meal plan to save money. We know not to waste food to save money. What we're gonna share with you now are some more hints and tips to gently give you maybe a little nudge, a tap, just to get you going and to remember that passion we all had when we started our frugal journey. Kind of to re-excite you on things you can do to save some money that are a little out of the ordinary, other than the tried and true. So the first thing I want to do with you is take you outside to my flowers for a minute. And I want to share with you something that maybe you haven't thought of before. I know it took Paul and I a while to get this concept down and to actually getting our flower gardens the way we wanted. Let's turn the camera around and get outside and start this money saving video for you. The first tip I really want to encourage you with is to stop planting annual flowers and go to perennials. Here is evening primrose. I started with one or two plants. Now the entire corner is covered in this beautiful, beautiful plant. The gooseneck is another flower that with one or two plants within a matter of time will cover an area as well. Their delicate white flowers are just lovely to look at and they spread beautifully. Bee balm is another plant that spreads. By buying these type of perennial flowers or having someone graciously share theirs with you, you do not have to plant annual flowers year after year. Here is the pink bells. One or two plants, look at how many I have now. The snowball bush, look at how it just spreads. Please note, as with any kind of flowering plants, any kind of plants in general, do your research, know the toxicity, especially if you have pets, small children, and don't forget to wear gloves. Now on to more great frugal hints and tips. Another idea that has been presented to Paul and I, and we think is a great one, and I don't know if any of you do it, and if you do, leave me details in the comments, is bartering. My neighbor may say to me, please, can you bake me two loaves of your oatmeal bread? And my neighbor will say, I will give you several pounds of fresh squash from my garden. Well, that is a win-win. I've got fresh vegetables. I've just made her two loaves of bread and she's one on that end. So it could be services, it could be goods. Please, again, you're only gonna to wanna to do this with people you know and trust. <laughs> that goes without saying. Bartering was something in the past that was used constantly. Now we have gotten away from it because we have become a money society. Money is everything. But you have to remember goods and services 
are worth just as much as money. Think about bartering, especially if you have a special talent like baking bread or growing beautiful vegetables or knitting or crocheting or baking pies. And there's somebody else that you know that has a special quality. Ask them, would you like to switch and barter goods or services? What a great way to get things you don't have, get things you want for minimal cost. So don't forget bartering. Now, some comments that came through that we just thought were great. A lot of frugal people enjoy being generous to charities. You have your special charities that you give to, whether it be religious, whatever, it doesn't matter. That's where your heart and you want your money to go. What do you do about all the other charities that are constantly asking you for money? or when you're out and about and someone is selling raffle tickets at an event and you kind of feel obligated to do it. What is a polite, good way to say, just not interested? One viewer wrote this and I thought it was brilliant. Basically, you say something to the effect of, we have all our charitable giving planned out for the year. Thank you anyway. Perfect. To the point, you've told them that you have your own personal charities that you give to, and a conversation. Nobody should make us feel like we have to do something we're uncomfortable. Great answer, I love that one. Another great tip that came in was those near empty mayonnaise containers, mustard containers, ketchup containers. Add some oil, add some vinegar, some spices, give it a shake and you have homemade salad dressing. I love that. I always take my spatula and skim everything out, but there's times that still there's little bits and pieces I can't get out. I thought that was a great tip. Another viewer says she buys cocoa when it's inexpensive and what she does to make her coffee extra special, she puts a dash of cocoa in every cup of coffee. So she's having this delicious mocha drink that you would probably spend six or seven dollars at Starbucks for in the comfort of her own home. So cocoa, as I showed you with those cocoa brownies we made, endless uses. So I thought that was a really good one. Another viewer said she made mac and cheese balls out of leftover macaroni and cheese. We have all been in a restaurant where you have seen mac and cheese balls on the menu. They're these little tiny balls of bite-sized heaven. <laughs> they really are so good. What she said she did had leftover mac and cheese. She used a melon ball to scoop it, rolled it in panko, and then you can either fry them in a little bit of oil or bake them in the oven. Oh my goodness, a fraction, fraction, of the cost of what they would sell for as an appetizer in a restaurant, using those leftovers in a whole new way. Another great tip a viewer gave us, with the cost of flour, with the cost of yeast and everything going up, they buy packets of flour tortillas, the large flour tortillas, and that's how they make their pizza. Economical, saves a ton of time. You can top it with whatever you want and they're ready to go in a minute. And you can find those flour tortillas at reasonable prices when they go on sale. So that's a great tip as well. This was a great suggestion. Use the good stuff. What does that mean? Bring out your good china. Bring out the good tablecloths. That's what they are to be used for. Enjoy them. So many times we pack this stuff away. We don't use it. We don't enjoy it. That's what it's there for. I have to say I am pretty good about it. I use all my vintage Pyrex. I use my vintage dinnerware. There are still a couple tablecloths I'm afraid to use that came from my grandmother. I'm still a little hesitant. I know I could put plastic on them and that probably would be a great solution, but use the good stuff. What are we waiting for? What are we saving it for? Use it, enjoy it. Another great tip, we do this one, is instead of those plastic shower curtain liners, go with a cloth liner you will save so much money. Those cloth liners, you may pay a little bit more for initially, but you throw them in the washing machine, they come out perfectly clean, 
you hang them up to dry and they live on and on and on and they really do. Just make sure that they are waterproof or water resistant. Those plastic ones tend to get icky. You wash them, they get weird. You know what? Over time, all that plastic really adds up. So think about a fabric shower curtain liner. Great tip. A lot of you ask, where are Dixie's dog treats? Guess what? We don't buy Dixie dog treats. People give us treats for Dixie and that's wonderful but we don't buy them. What are Dixie's dog treats? I will tell you, her dog treats are fresh carrots, fresh lettuce, and fresh dog safe fruit. Sit, Sit down. Little lettuce. Check a little more lettuce. Sit down. Good, Good girl. girl. All right, carrots. Sit. She loves salad. Listen to her. Okay, here's a little more lettuce. Sit down. Good girl. There we are. Yay! So there's Dixie eating her carrots and lettuce. Those are absolute treats for her. That's what she loves. It is healthy for her. We don't give her an abundance, just a little bit. But we find that kind of treat much more economical, much more healthy, it's safe for the dog, and always remember, please, before you give your dog anything, you always check to make sure if your dog can consume it, because not all human food is safe for dogs. Please, before you give the dog anything, you gotta check that. And also, if your dog has any allergies, you have to be careful of that as well. But as far as Dixie goes, we will have people give us treats, but we have never, ever bought her a bag of treats. We just don't. It's lettuce, carrots, and dog safe fruit. That's it, economical, healthy, and she loves it. Another great tip that you all suggested. When you cut up a watermelon for storage, as you're cutting the watermelon, put it in a colander over a big bowl. So the watermelon juice comes out. And then when you put your boiled watermelon in the refrigerator, it's not sitting in that juice because that juice helps spoil the watermelon. And then take that juice and freeze it. Some people said in ice cube trays and add it to beverages. Other people said they take it and they add it into salad dressings. They make marinades out of it. There's so much you can do. It's a fruit juice, think of it that way. That was a great tip that I did not know and we are implementing going forward. Another great one, people are telling me over and over, we are buying a frozen pizza, keeping it in the freezer, and those days we wanna go for takeout pizza, we pull that out instead. It costs a heck of a lot less. Our frozen pizzas in this area, for a halfway decent pizza, would be about $5. Our pizzas from the pizzerias are $15. That's the cheapest one you can buy, $15. Oh my goodness, now we all need an easy night, but that is some savings, it really is. And for those nights where you're tired and you don't wanna cook, a lot of you are turning to that, and I love that idea. Common sense one, but just a gentle reminder, buy family size packs of meat and then package them individually. You will save hundreds and hundreds of dollars throughout the year doing this. For some reason, individual pieces of meat are so much more expensive. Buying in bulk is always cheaper, and meat is probably the biggest money saver when it comes to bulk buying. Get it home, use your food saver. If you don't have a food saver, wrap it in freezer wrap. You will save so much money over time. There can be as much as $2 a pound, a pound difference between a small package of meat and a large package of meat. And even if you're a family of one or two, get those larger packages and individually process them and get them in the freezer. Trust me, huge money saver. Another one, you all know that I tell you to stop buying those paper towels, 
stop buying napkins. Keep some in the house for like those yucky things you don't want to use cloth for. If you can make that switch from paper towels and napkins to cloth, you again will save hundreds and hundreds of dollars a year. Hundreds of dollars a year. Remember the Rummage Church sale that I showed you a couple videos ago? I got the whole bag of Christmas items for $5. Well, this Sunday at church again, everything was 50% off. I was so excited. I said to Paul, let's not impulse buy. Let's buy things that will help on our frugal journey. They had fun colored napkins and ours are getting pretty yucky. Aren't they perfect? There were 16 of them for $2. $2. Now we have been using these napkins for quite some time now. Years. So yeah, years. years. So these are now going to become our rag napkins. These are going to become what we wipe up spills with and things like that because at this point they are pretty worn out, they are pretty stained, and they have served us well. But now they're going to become our rag napkins. What look like brand new beautiful napkins for two dollars. Please keep your eye out for something like this. Now this is another item that we bought at that rummage sale for half price. We entertain outside a lot in the summer. And I have to be honest with you, I am not comfortable bringing glass dishes outside for people to eat on. We all have pets, something breaks, makes me uncomfortable. So what do we do? I looked around for plastic plates and they have been expensive. And Paul and I, this has been on our really want slash need list. Well, look what we found brand new. Yay! They are hard washable plastic. They were 50 cents a piece. So we got seven of them for $3.50. Uh, I can't tell you how happy I am. This was just such a great deal. We don't have to buy paper plates. We don't have to buy plastic plates. This is the kind of stuff while you are out tag sailing, while you are in the thrift store, look for. Because these are the type of items that will save you money, big, big, big money in the long run. I don't know if you've looked at how much hefty plastic plates are, but they are over the top expensive. I think we saw a pack of 30 was like $8. And you toss them away when you're done. You can't, I mean, maybe you could wash them, but they're not even thick, they're thin. Keep an eye out for something like this, especially if you entertain outside. These were two great purchases. I know I get a lot of questions about how I store my potatoes. This is a great money-saving hack. I put my potatoes in mesh bags so that the air can circulate through them. This was a bag filled with oranges. And this was a bag someone gave me that had onions in it. And I just hang them in my pantry where it's dark and cool and they last beautifully. And I'm gonna leave you with this one. One of the greatest money-saving frugal entertainment activities you can do is volunteer. If you are capable of volunteering and it might be something you would think about doing, that is a great way to give back, to meet people, to get involved in free, frugal fun. Yes, volunteering is fun, especially if it is a cause you are passionate about, especially if it is something near and dear to your heart. We're only suggesting this if you feel comfortable being out and about at this time, and this is not for everyone, but it is an idea. So we hope this video got you going, got you thinking, motivated you, challenged you to start thinking back to your frugal roots back to what got you going in the beginning. Everybody's frugal journey is different. Everyone's. Without a doubt, yours is not mine. 
Mine is not whoever's out in Washington State or down in the Carolinas. We're all different, but we all share the same common goal to be frugal, to save money for whatever reason it may be, or maybe it's just habit and you love it and this is the lifestyle you've chosen. Thank you for sharing this time with us. Today's question of the day, give me a new way that you have been frugal recently. What is something you have implemented in your frugal life that you never did before and just started to do it recently? I know for us right here, this is something that we have implemented. We will never go back to paper plates or plastic plates. I'm gonna look for more of these and going forward, this is what we will use exclusively when we entertain outside. In the long run, it will save us hundreds of dollars. So think about it, give us your best one. We thank you for sharing this time with us. We ask that you please give this a big thumbs up Subscribe if you haven't, please don't forget that comment. Remember we love you, remember to stay safe, remember to be well, and above all, we wish you blessings. Bye-bye for now.